Hey guys and welcome to a new video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a tail that attaches and detaches to a bodysuit. I do use the template of Mijiwara Cosplay's uh, feline tail um, and the character we are making is this one. I will be doing a uh, series on this because I have been commissioned to make a full suit. I won't be doing a video on the Digigrade uh, bodysuit as of yet, just because I want to make sure that I can have enough time to just make it perfect um, and not rush, basically. I'm going to be making a video on everything else I do, so this is part one, making the tail. <laughs> the tail looks amazing. It's so beautiful and so soft and perfect. This tail does need two zippers, one to zip the tail to the bodysuit which can then be unzipped and changed with a different tail as long as um, the sizes are the same at the end of the tail that meets the tailbone. <laughs> Here is the pattern. Um, it looks very confusing right now but I will explain. So to start off with I use the uh, main pattern of Mijuara cosplay to get the shape that I liked but up here I wanted to make this bit a little bit longer because this is a bit that's going to attach to your tailbone on your suit and I wanted to keep the curves going but I wanted it to be wider because originally it was up to here whereas I needed it about an inch wider altogether. Now you want to put your markings in so we have the rainbow markings so we have the bottom of the tail then we have three little kind of pointed bendy stripes and then at the bottom it comes out up here and then obviously on the suit it has one that goes up an up stripe and then it comes down so here in blue which I've scribbled out in orange is what I didn't do <laughs> because if I um, had these markings and just did it like this then when I cut these out I can't really give a seam allowance because it would come inwards but then when I put the uh, marking on and sew it together it would be too big so it wouldn't work so I've had to get the points all the way down so that when I cut it I can cut that out around there and around there and I would only have this bit here left and I can add seam allowance on that Okay, and then finally you want to mark it with arrows of the fur direction. I do this at the end because then I can mark it on each of the uh, cut sections as well. Um, so obviously I have the fur going that way and then it goes down. <laughs> um, down, 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 down and then over here it goes out. Um, and then you want to mark on what fur goes where so these markings are rainbow fur um, and then obviously the rest of it is just grey so I haven't marked it but I might just to make sure that I remember because I'm so forgetful. If this doesn't make much sense to you I will be doing a separate video on me making patterns um, and so many other different tales anyway so do not worry. Everything has been cut out now I'm going to be sorting them into piles of colour. The sun is out, my bedroom's a mess, and everything's being moved around. Derek is dying in his pot. <laughs> I don't actually know, I should probably go check on him. But <laughs> we have done this one. I sewed it, then I unpicked it, then I re-sewed it because 
I thought that, oh, I can just put it together. I don't need to use the pattern piece to help me onto which bit goes where. Turns out I do. So make sure you always have your pattern piece to hand, not just go sit on your bed thinking you can do it yourself while you're watching TV. So this is what this looks like. I'm just showing you one because I haven't done the other one. And this <laughs> rainbow fur is great because it can literally be brushed into whichever direction it wants to be brushed in. Um, and it will go in that direction. However, it likes to poke up a lot. It just wants to stick itself out. So I'm going to give that a brush real quick. Ta-da! Ooh, it's looking so, so cute. So I've done one side, now I've just got to sew the other side. <laughs> eh. That's one side, and this is the other side. They both very much need a brush. But now I'm going to use my 10 inch zipper because hopefully it's going to be long enough to stuff the stuffing pillow inside. You don't have to do this, you can just... Um, I'd still recommend having a zipper because it makes it easier for doing the top bit but um, it, you don't have to make a pillow, you can just put stuffing in. <laughs> this is what I mean, I've just placed it right by the top bit where it comes inwards and then I have it down. So I've marked them both on each but because I know how um, forgetful I am, I'm actually going to sew this bit together here and then sew over here and all the way around. Small tip for when pinning together. So each piece, pattern piece, should line up with the pattern piece on the other side. So I like to line up the pattern piece and the colors. So for example, we have this bit right at the beginning before the marker and we have the same on the other side. And now I'm going to line where these two meet, line them up where they meet, and then I'm going to clip it. This is just to ensure that everything uh, kind of stays in the right place um, and it gets clipped properly. Uh, so I'm just going to sew this bit from the beginning all the way to the marker point, um, and then I can just start on the other marker point. Now that this bit has been sewn, I'm going to line up the rest of it. I'm going to start where I have marked it. Well, I'm clipping the gap we made because I know I'm not going to be sewing it, but it just uh, keeps it all together while I'm sewing the rest. <laughs> also, I'm only clipping it on the bits where it joins up on both sides. Okay. And now I'm joining the where the colours both stop from start from the grey. Okay. Now this side's going to be easier because it's going to be really easy to connect these two together and make them exactly the same. So it's all clipped and all of the colours match up on both sides. It's not going to be this side down here, this side up here. Um, so it's easier to see now. And then we have our gap here so I'm going to start here. This is where everyone starts to get really excited because now we have an actual tail. Everything lined up just like I had planned. Everything is good. The seam allowance, I just use the side of the presser foot. Done the pattern and it's the exact size you want. If you want to add seam allowance, I would normally add a quarter of an inch because I use the guide as a presser foot. 
for that and the guide on the press foot from the needle is about a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to quickly turn it out once to see uh, how it looks and two because we've used a sewing machine I would like to brush out any fur that could have got caught but by doing all the clip and pushing the fur in first hopefully uh, it was a minimal amount. <laughs> Before we turn it back put your hot glue gun on ready Small tip, if you have a switch for a higher setting, put it on the higher setting first because then it heats up faster because it needs to get hotter so it gets hotter which means it, I don't know, it just, it works, okay? <laughs> Ow, I burnt my thumb. Oh yeah. I'm adding the glue at the top all the way um, along the edge above the bar that stops the zipper coming off. Uh, this is so I can just attach the bottom bit to the fur already and then the rest just gets a little bit easier because part of it's already attached and it won't keep falling off. <laughs> you also want to make sure your zipper is facing into the fur. Um, because otherwise if you put it on the other side you won't be able to unzip it and zip it again because the zipper will be on the inside. So you want to make sure this goes down. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a little bit of glue right in the middle between the zipper and the edge itself because this side we're going to be sewing, the zipper, you don't want to get it on it because that'll be a mess. Um, and then I'm just going to glue that down near the um, edge. You want the zipper teeth to be um, slightly behind the edge so not over the edge you want it slightly back rather than forward because well yeah because then it looks better otherwise you'll be able to see it on the outside Hey guys, so we have just sewn uh, the, 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 the zipper on. I can't speak today. Now we're going to be uh, doing the second zipper. So uh, to work out what size you are going to need, I use the pattern which is one side of the thing. I measured the bit that goes against the tailbone and then I doubled that because this goes in a circle and it's double it, it's not just one of these, it's both. <laughs> it makes sense. So it was 5 inches for me, so I've got a 10 inch zipper. You want an open ended zipper or create one, up to you. I just ended up pulling the little metal bit off. Um, I'm going to be using the bit with the zipper pull on it for the actual tail itself and this bit I'm saving for the bodysuit so I'm going to be putting this in a box so I don't lose it. <laughs> now you're going to need to put your glue gun on if you took it off, I mean this is the next day for me so. So like with the other zipper I'm just going to put like a blob in the middle and attach it to where the point meets up at the top and then I'm going to be putting blobs in the middle all the way around. I'm tucking the fur in just so I can minimise me catching it with glue because it goes all yucky if you catch it with the glue. And you want the teeth edge to be along the opening edge and you want your zipper to be facing downwards so the back bit is upwards. just gonna trim this bit down a little bit just so it can go against it a bit nicer. I 
Okay, now you can turn your glue gun off because we no longer need it. For the next part, you are going to need a measuring tape. That's what it's called. I'm basically going to use the size of your zip um, and your base. Make a circle. <laughs> it's so tiny and cute. Perfect for a cat. Um, and then we're going to put this on some minky fabric, draw around it, and then cut it out. And this is what we're going to use to hide everything and put belt loops on. So. Um, I'm using elastic because it allows more for um, if a kid was to pull on your tail, it can stretch a little. <gasps> the only annoying thing about elastic. Okay. And I'm only using one belt loop. Normally I would use two because two um, allows that when you wear it separately, allows it to sit on the belt between the belt loop on the clothing so it doesn't move to the side of you basically kind of thing but because this is so small I'm going to use one so I'm putting the elastic on in the same direction that the minky is going So we have our belt loop on, I've done it in black and there's definitely enough room to fit a belt there. Yeah. Now that that's done we can turn our tail the right way round. Now we can place our belt loop in, so we're going to put it so the, um, the elastic is on the top. You want to look at where the seams are on the inside here and which one is the top and which one is the bottom okay so the tail is going to go on like this so i want to make sure the belt loop is up not across because otherwise it will go on wrong and clip it okay so it's clipped in now the tricky part we're going to be sewing through the fabric even a little bit of elastic when we get to this point as well as <laughs> the tail fabric and <laughs> The, the belt, the zip, the zip, that's it. And we're gonna be sewing through the zip. When you very first sew, because I'm gonna have a knot, I want the knot to be hidden inside, so I sew, I'm putting my needle through the fabric and the zip first, pushing it through, and then I'm going to hide the knot inside the fabric and then I'm going to start sewing. Okay, so now that it has been sewn on, this is what it will look like, and then obviously you can push it all back in, ready for when it goes on. I used a blue thread that was easy to see, but slightly hidden, just because if it ever needs to come in for repairs, because one day it will, all fursuits will do eventually, <laughs> Um, it will be easier to uh, take it off and replace it. Um, also, I think it just kind of looks cool with a special colour. <laughs> All we need to do now is make the pillow for the stuffing. You can actually just leave it here and stuff it. The first thing you are going to need to do is get all of your pattern pieces together and stick them back together. <laughs> okay, so the pattern piece has been taped back together roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just enough so that you can put it down and draw around it on your fabric. Now, in terms of fabric, you can use polyester, cotton, or that kind of stuff, jersey. I'm gonna see if I can use this thick jersey fabric. Um, I'm not sure if I have enough left but let's just take a look jersey fabric is good because it will be stretchy and squishy 
cotton fabric will be good because it's very sturdy so a thick kind of jersey is probably the best <laughs> Okay, now for the final part, we have a pillow, which looks like a bean. It looks like an oversized bean. 